Go back and read some of the letters of Abigail Adams to her son, John Quincy, and you'll understand why John Quincy Adams, having been president of the United States, returned to serve in the legislature in Washington, and then began his truly heroic time. As he battled slavery on the floor of the Congress, below that figure of Cleo and her clock and her history book, who died on the floor of Congress battling slavery. There's a marker on the floor where his desk was. We have got to raise children that feel that way. And we'll feel better for having done it. We can't just give them everything. What we have to give them is the spirit, the desire, through a sense of history. Not long after September 11th, there were people on television and in the newspapers saying this is the most difficult, dangerous, darkest time in the history of our country. Well, it was a terrible time. Unquestionably the worst single day in our whole history. But this, this isn't the darkest time, not by any means. We've been through much worse. We were through worse in 1770. Wooden rifles. We had no air force. Half our navy had been sunk at Pearl Harbor. There was no guarantee whatsoever that the Nazi machine could be stopped. It wasn't predestined at all. And Churchill came across the Atlantic at great risk to himself and to the war effort to give an, an important speech, memorable speech, in which he said, we haven't journeyed this far because we're made of sugar candy. He wasn't just a great eloquent leader, let's remember, he was also an historian. He knew whereof he spoke. I'm often asked if I could be a fly on the wall for some moment or event or scene that I've written about, what would it be? Well, there, that's, a, that's a hard question to answer. There's so many. But one of them, surely, would be the day that Ralph Waldo Emerson, young Emerson, recently out of Harvard, went out to Quincy, Massachusetts to visit the old president, John Adams, then in the last year of his life. The year was 1825. So there we had two of the most brilliant minds in the whole history of our country and two quintessentially New Englanders, wives, learned, eloquent, lucid, humorous, and and compatriots, both intellectually and as Americans, despite the differences, the vast differences in their age and experience. And Emerson afterward wrote down much of what was said, fortunately we know, through what he wrote. And at one point Adams said, I would to God there were more ambition in the country. And then he paused and he said, by that I mean ambition of the laudable kind, to excel. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could reinstate through what we do as parents, grandparents, as teachers, as legislators, that old, noble ambition to excel. That's my talk.